Welcome back. This is how you can deploy software using group policy. On your Windows Server Manager, open the Group Policy Management Console. On the Group Policy Management Console left hand side, you will have your domain name and underneath it, the organizational units associated with it. The first thing you need to do, you need to decide where you will be creating your GPO. So this is depending on your network structure, your domain structure. For me, I will be applying my GPO under the NetIT Geeks OU. So I'm gonna select that and I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna select create a GPO in this domain and link it here. So again, depending on your organizational structure, you can decide which OU this GPO should be applied and then right click and select create a GPO in this domain and link it here. I'm gonna name this GPO as software deployment. You can name it anything you like and I'm gonna click OK. So now I have created a GPO underneath my organizational unit NetIT Geeks. If I select this GPO, it'll give me a pop-up saying that any changes that you make to this GPO will apply to anything that is linked underneath it. I'm simply gonna click OK here. And under the scope, I see that this GPO is under sanuja.local slash netitgeeks because that's the organizational unit that I created this GPO. So let's go ahead and start configuring this GPO. I'm gonna right click on the GPO, select edit, and it will open the group policy management editor. On here, you will see two uh, nodes. Some people call them scopes, but these are officially known as nodes. One node is called computer configuration. The other node is called the user configuration. Under each of these nodes, you have sections underneath it. If you expand policies under group, uh, under the scope uh, computer configuration, you will have software settings. And if you expand the software settings, you will have the section called software installation. Under the user configuration scope, also known as the node, if you expand policies, and then if you expand software settings, again, you will see the same software installation section right here. We have these two nodes, also known as scope again, because depending on how you apply your GPO, you can either add your software installation push here or here. For me, I'm going to create this GPO so that I, I can deploy software to all my computers connected to the domain. So I'm going to go underneath the computer configuration node and I'm going to create it right here. But you can also put it to specific user configurations underneath here. But depending on which option you select, certain options within the software installation configurations in here uh, may be available to you and may not be available to you. And I will explain that next. So let's go under the computer configuration node under software installation on the right hand pane, I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna select properties. So instead of creating a package right away, I'm just gonna go to the properties to give you some information on what kind of properties we have available in here. So under the software installation properties, I have how the package will be pushed to the user. So the options are deploy, uh, you know, the software with a dialog box. In other words, when user log into their computer, it'll pop up a dialog box saying, hey, you have a new software that is pushed by the domain and you know, it'll basically give you some dialogue like information. We have publish, 
which is grayed out and we have assign and we have advanced. So these are like different ways of how we can push this software. So typically most people use the display, uh, the software dialog box or publish. And the reason why publish is grayed out here because we are underneath the computer configuration scope. The publish option, what it does, it, it add to add or remove programs of a user and then user can decide if they want to go ahead and install it. The assign option is basically the software gets installed itself uh, without displaying any dialog boxes to the user and it will be configured on the computer. And the advanced option have few other options available to you that can be configured for the user side. And then for the interface for user options, you have basic and maximum. And depending on which one you pick, a certain configurations on the user device may change. But if I go into the user configuration scope, software installation section and right click and select properties, you will notice now I have the publish option available as well. The reason for that is this publish option is basically user specific option because it gives the user the ability to select whether they're going to install that software or not. So see, now I can select the public option. Publish option is available only underneath the user configuration node. But I'll be doing this under the computer configuration node because I want to get the software pushed to every single computer regardless of the user. So I'm going to select that section here, I'm going to right click. And if I go to properties again, I only have, you know, these three available. So these are the default uh, options right here. And then if I go to advance, it has, uh, you know, few options that allow you to configure how the software will be installed. For example, under here, 32 bit applications, on 64-bit platforms, it says make 32-bit x86 software install application available to Windows 64 machines, x64 machines. And, you know, uh, I, I would typically check this thing off because that make it available to the users. Another options that I may select that I highly recommend is uninstall the applications when they fall out of scope of management. What that it will do is if you delete this group policy, it will uninstall the software on the client devices because I have this option turned on. If you forget to turn this option on, you can obviously go back and turn, turn it on. And when the GPOs get updated on the client machines, and it will simply, you know, uh, take that into consideration. So under advanced, so these are the options available to you. Under file extensions, you have the ability to add uh, certain file extensions to invoke applications when the user open documents. What this does is basically, let's say your user have a, a specific file, let's say .docx file. And let's say, you need to, uh, you don't want this Microsoft Office software installed on every single computer, but if a user open up a .docx file, it can invoke the Office software to get installed. So whenever the user have that specific file extension, the user double click and open that file, and it'll give you uh, the option to install that software at that time, but not prior to it. So in other words, the computer will not have the software installed, but as soon as the user open the specific X file extension, it will start installing it. I'll call this, uh, you know, an on-demand software installation. So you can add that in here. Then you also have categories that you can create. For example, if you have hundreds of software or if you have even not even 100, 20, 30 software that you need to 
install on your client machines and you want to keep track of them i can do that by adding categories for example let's say uh, i will call a category called uh, core category so these are core software that every user will get and then i will add a let's say another category called required and then uh, let's call another category let's say uh, special so i just created three categories but you don't need to create these categories i will explain how these categories coming into play when we start creating the gpo but in here under categories tab you can create separate categories now these are the options that we have and i can click apply and this will apply to everything underneath here underneath the computer configurations uh, node software installation section now on the right hand pane under the software installation so you're going to select the software installation you're still in here on the right hand plane we're going to right click and we create new you're going to select new and we're going to select package so this is how we are going to tell where the software is so right now i have access a network location it is important that you select the package for installation where all your devices have access to so example uh, for example you need to make sure that the software package is available across the network so i am in a server uh, location uh, a shared location and under install packages i have few packages i have firefox and office here yeah, right so these are msi packages so i'm going to select the firefox msi and i'm going to click open and now it'll give me a option to how this software should be deployed notice again we don't have the publish option we have assign and advance so we are we can just select simply select the default option the assign select this option if the application will be pushed without modification if you select advance it'll have some application uh, you know options that you can modify so what is advanced if anybody wants to uh, you know know about that so basically some software packages may have options such as language selections that you can configure under advanced for now i'll simply select assign and i will click ok and there you go you have now created a software installation group policy with micro uh, with microsoft windows server that has the moxilla firefox that get pushed to all the windows devices connected to this domain now if i select this and if i right click and if i go to properties and you'll see the similar options that i mentioned earlier you have deployment options again we have published grayed out we have assigned available we have that uninstall application when it falls out of scope management and remember that advanced option when i selected this software a few seconds ago it's still available underneath the properties right here in the advanced tab if i select click on the advanced tab i have right here ignore language when deploying package so that's an advanced option available here so if you don't want your user to select the language options you can select this and click ok and that will get you that option available so under upgrades you can add any future upgrades under this tab under here that is associated with firefox so for example let's say if i push this uh, moxilla firefox uh, version to all my computers connected to my network now an upgrade comes along and i want to add firefox upgrade you don't delete this particular deployment because if you do that it will uninstall it may uninstall the software from uh, some of the devices 
which get that uh, GPO pushed and updated. So instead, what do you do? You basically select that, uh, you know, software under here in this GPO, go to properties, and we're gonna go to upgrades, and we're gonna click add, and then you can simply add your upgrade packages in here. What that will do is it'll go ahead and install that upgrade. And remember under the deployment tab, I have already selected uninstall this application when it falls out of scope of management. So during this, uh, these upgrades, it will uninstall the older versions and the new version will get installed on your computers. Under categories, you can select what category this should be uh, falls under. So for me, under Moxilla Firefox one, I'm going to select required. You can select whatever you want. And remember these categories we created when we went under properties of the software installation. So if I click here, go to properties under categories, see these are the categories that is actually showing up um, in the same one uh, in the properties here, right? So that's where I selected uh, where required because I have created required in properties here. So under categories, under software installation properties. So we have, uh, so what I have done uh, with the properties here, I added that category required to this. Under modification, again, there are a few modifications you can customize on certain software. This particular software doesn't have this those any of those options available so that's why there is nothing in here and under security it tells you who should have access to what so you can change you know uh you know who should have full control uh, and all the other options under the security settings here this is just like a another windows uh, server or windows security options so i'm going to click apply i'm going to click ok and now the software is applied under the group policy, uh, what we call the software development group policy we created here. So we can close this. Now, if you go to any connected client machine that is underneath this sanuja.local domain, once that client machine gets into the network, log on or reboots, it should install the Firefox software. So if you have any questions or concerns regarding this particular lab or demonstration, uh, please leave a comment below. Don't forget to thumbs up this video and subscribe to my channel 